Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Thank you, God. A good Awesome. If I can have Sister Hopkins come to the piano with an A and B selection. I've got here. <laughs> she gonna do that for y'all. <laughs> God has been so good and merciful, hasn't he? Amen. Um, even though all of us in this building are going through different things and different trials and situations, sometimes you have to remember how far God's brought you from. Amen. Amen. And when you figure out how far he's brought you from, it gets you excited about where he's going to take you to. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
He is very much alive. Amen. Remember time y'all who been here for I don't know how long I got up here? Y'all, all of y'all remember this. I get up here to tell you, I believe in God, that he's going to find me in my roof. And I'll be her Boaz. And people thought I was crazy up here year after year, standing in the agreement for 20 some odd years. And finally I gave up. There was a brief time I just finally gave up. So she don't exist. I'm just going to be single and serve God all the days of my life. Amen. And how many of you know that when you give up, the impossible will not become possible? Amen. Amen. But all of a sudden, I start attending weddings and things, and also the desire came back and said, I want to find a wife to love. Not so much, I got to the place where it went from being, I want to find someone to love me, to I want to find someone to love. See how I twisted that? So too many times people are looking for a man or for a woman for them to love them, and that's the wrong way you should be praying. You should be asking God, help me find somebody to love. Amen. Because the Bible says give, and it shall be given unto you. Amen. And when you do that, he will create that person to love you back. Amen? Amen. That's how it works. And God, in that time, was talking to my pastor in the year 2010, January. And it was the first Sunday. I remember like it was yesterday. Praise the Lord. He said, make it happen. He was talking about something totally different. And the Lord spoke to my pastor. And when he said, make it happen, I heard the Lord say, Chris, make it happen. Well, Ruth is a thousand miles away from you. But I'm going to help you make it happen. And so I got my little list. I showed it twice, and I said, Lord, this is impossible, but I believe that you're going to help me find this woman. So I traveled six different states to look for her. Yes, I did. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. All right, right. Amen. <laughs> and I, you got you to you act. It's not just believing. That's right. Your belief is not belief until you put feet to it. That's right. So some of you, you need to go and do some wardrobe shopping. Your pastor remember this. All of a sudden, they start seeing me wear different kinds of clothes. <laughs> I said, I got prepared because I got to look like the husband that she's probably looking for. Amen. Amen. Right that day, you got to look like the, look, the part that you're trying to get the answer to your prayer for. Amen. Amen. And then what happened was, then I said, you know, I also had this desire, I, I got to get a better job. And God started getting all kinds of job offers because I was seeking. Amen. But notice I twisted my prayer. Instead of looking for someone to love me, I was looking for someone to love. Amen. So let's go to my text to talk to you about. Believe for the impossible. How many want to believe for the impossible? Amen. Let me give you examples of the impossible. Your family getting saved. Impossible. Let's be real. M. Everybody say M. Possible. Another example. Finding a man with a job. Impossible. <laughs> Amen. Finding a, a, a woman who is willing for a man to help support her. Impossible. Amen. I'm making jokes, but y'all know the truth. Amen. Finding somebody who just saved. Impossible. Here's another one, y'all. Y'all can laugh at this. Somebody who saved and who happens to look good. Impossible. <laughs> Let me tell you a true story. <laughs> I remember 10 years, 15 years before I met Shereen. This girl, bless her heart, she was saved. She was sanctified. I think she was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well. Ugly as homemade sin. <laughs> I'm serious. As my, as my grandmother would say, uglier than the homemade sin. She was so ugly, Jesus was down off the, on the cross. He almost came off the cross to heal her. Amen. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and the reason why I say it like this, she was ugly not because of her personal appearance. I watched how she treated sinners. I almost asked her out to date, and I watched how she treated people who weren't Christians. Amen. And she, she acted like she was better than they were. She talked, she called all these scriptures around them. See, ugly doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean physical, y'all. Amen. Amen. When you're looking for somebody, you, you pay attention to how they treat others. Because how they treat others is how they're going to treat you. That's right. And I watched how she laughed at people. And I like, look at this. She almost got blessed. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you should look at it, y'all. That's how you should look. Don't settle. Write that down. Don't settle. God wants us to go to the highest level. Amen. The Bible says in Mark 11 chapter and 22nd verse. Go to Mark 11 chapter 22nd verse. Amen. I'm adding jokes by giving you text to it. Amen. 
Because sometimes you got to give examples so people understand where you're coming from. Because a lot of times people get in front of the pulpit on television and they tell you belief in the impossible and they limit it to just money. Amen. That's a given. God wants his people to have money. That's right. As far as how much, it's according to your faith. Some people don't want to be millionaires. They're scared half to death just to get $2 in their wallet. Some people don't want to have a, be a thousand there. Some people just want their bills paid. Amen. Amen. So whatever your faith is, that's what God wants to bless you with. All he asks you to do is make sure your motive's right. You serve a God who has no problem giving you whatever you need. Think about it. Have you noticed that people who talk about prosperity and they talk bad about people having money, yet they tell you how they're going to go to heaven and have a mansion? That's right. Hello? Man is already inhabited by poor people. They're inhabited by rich people. <laughs> Amen. So God look at your motive. I also hear people talk the bad about people who want to be healed. Who doesn't want to be healed? Amen. So I'm crazy if you're like, Lord, thank you for giving me AIDS and cancer and diabetes and heart disease and backache. The devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. God wants his people to experience healing, but it's according to our faith. Amen. Amen. So Mark the 11th chapter. And 22nd verse, this is how you believe for the impossible. To give you context, Jesus, let's go back up, the 14th verse, actually 13th verse. Jesus is hungry, amen? And this is what God was speaking to me about. A lot of times when you believe God for the impossible, it's things are not in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that tells you how to find a husband or wife. It, you, it gives you, how should I say it? It gives you subjects, but it doesn't tell you all the ins and out how to do it. Amen. How I found my wife was uniquely different from how dad found his wife. Amen. There's similarities, but yet specifics according to you, according to your situations. Those are things you believe God for the impossible. Amen. Amen. It take, how many of those takes faith to believe God for things that are not specifically told in the Bible? Like, should I take this job or that job? It's not in the Bible. Should I have this man or this man or this woman or this woman? It's not in the Bible. He only gives you guidelines. That's all the Bible is, is guidelines. Amen? So the book of Mark, the 11th chapter, and the 13th verse. Jesus is hungry. He just came from preaching the gospel. He's a typical preacher. After he got done preaching, he got hungry. Amen. He couldn't find no fried chickens. He had to settle for fig tree. So he went over to the 13th verse and said, seeing him far off, he was so hungry, he saw a fig tree far off, like miles away. How many know when you get home and you see stuff? Amen. You see McDonald's, Taco Bell, Popeyes, I'm far off. Amen? Amen? He got done talking about blessed are those who hunger. He also got hungry. So 13 verses says, seeing the far off, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. He came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Look at this, look at this, guys. He went looking at the fig tree. It wasn't time for it to bear any figs. It's like going to an orange uh, tree. He was looking for oranges, but it wasn't time for it. It wasn't the season for it. He knew this. He lived there for 30 some odd years. He knows this. And look what happens. He's upset because he wanted something to eat. Write this down. Sometimes your faith is ignited when you get upset. Amen. You got to get tired where you are. That's right. One day I woke up and I got tired of being alone. One day I woke up and I was like, I want to be a father. One day I got tired of all these bills. I woke up and said, I'm angry. I want these bills paid for. Amen. When you get tired of where you are, your faith is ignited. Jesus' faith was ignited when he saw there was no food on that tree. How many know your faith to get tired and go to the grocery store and no food on there? Y'all about to get on that, that truck quick. And it says, in response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. See, it's not true faith until unbelievers hear what you said. Amen. I was telling people who didn't even believe like I believe. I tell them, you know, this is the year I'm going to find my wife. And I said it such a way they thought she's here. Remember Grandpa? When he was in his lifestyle, that lifetime, Grandpa was awesome. I love Grandpa because Grandpa always challenged your faith. And, 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 and he heard me say it so much, well, boy, where is she? <laughs> where is she, boy? And someone told him, oh, that's just Chris believing God. Oh, he turned his chair. <laughs> Grandpa was awesome. I always loved visiting him because it's like he, he just, he, he keep you on your toes. Amen. It ain't true faith. Until other people hear what you said. Let me break it down to you. Those who are unemployed 
or looking for a better job. Every time someone asks you, how's things going? I'm working at this job, but I'm going to get something better. It's going to happen this year. Faith is not faith until you give it a deadline. Write that down. Amen. You don't just say God's going to bless. you got to give it a deadline. Now, it's up to God when it happens, but he wants you to use your faith to determine when you like it to happen. Because sometimes, I mean, I thought everything could happen in 2000. That's when Jesus was supposed to have come back. Remember that? So I was like, <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna graduate in 2000. I'm gonna get this job in 2000. My wife could be here in 2000. My kids could be here in 2000. I gave him the deadline. But if it's not in God's perfect will, He'll put roadblocks at it because He loves you. But He wants you to use faith. Amen? Amen. That's what I'm talking about. When you go to the Bible, you can't find specific times. Give it the deadline. The Bible says, go ahead and make your plans. Amen. Amen. That's faith. God is the one that will determine when it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. And his disciples heard 15 verse. So they came to Jerusalem and then Jesus went to the temple and began to drive out those bought and sold in the temple, overturned their tables and the money changers and seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry words through the temple. And he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves? There's a revelation in all this. Notice what Jesus didn't do. Oh, God, I just spoke to the fig tree. I don't see no tree, no figs growing. It ain't dying. It ain't, oh, Jesus. I mean, oh, God, what am I going to do? He didn't wake up on that one of the hours, ask God, why did he not hear his prayer? He said it once and left and what did he do? He went on his daily business and started, went to work. Said nothing about it. He acted like Jesus was so confident in what he said. He like, it's done. I don't see it. I don't hear it. I don't feel it. But it's done. And he walked away from it. And, 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 he, and the anointing was so strong on him that he saw some folks doing stuff at his church. He said, uh-uh. You ain't made my house. At first, I can get no figs. I don't get no food. And y'all busy having bingo games and casino games up in my house? He drove them all out. Because it's not appropriate to doing casino and bingo games in church. Amen. That's what he was talking about. Amen. Please, if you have any problems, go to info at mexico.org and give us your comments. Amen. Amen. And you move on and it says, he would not allow anyone to do any more selling in the church. Let's break it down. There's too many people using church as a way of making money and financial gain just for themselves. There's nothing wrong with, with finding creative ways to keep the lights on and helping the poor and helping your congregation, but it's another when you're fleecing your sheep. Amen. It's another when, it's nothing wrong having fi fi financial gain and having the mansions, all this, but not in the backs of the folks who are poor. Amen. And what I mean by that is getting on TV or getting somewhere, claiming scriptures out of context, and give $2,000 according to Mark eleven twenty three. And I'm like, wait a minute. God didn't tell you to do all that. That's another part what Jesus did not approve of. The Pharisees and scribes were attributing things to the Bible that God did not say. Amen? Amen. We as children of God had to be careful about that too. You see poor Christians walking up to sinners saying, the Lord just told me that you're supposed to give me some money to pay my light bill. You're doing the exact same thing that these Pharisees and scribes are doing. Amen? Amen. So you go on. 17 verses says, Then he taught, saying to them, he explained why he did what he did. Is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? We are called to pray. Amen? Amen. That's what church is for. Amen. Church primarily is for prayer. It says house of prayer for all nations. So you're not just praying for yourselves. You're praying for everyone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Notice what happened. This is a revelation. I believe God honored what Jesus said in the previous scriptures because he was ministering to people after he left his prayer requests. Write that down. If you want God to bless you, ask him one time and look for opportunities to minister to other people. Amen. Look at it. Jesus purposely looked for opportunities to minister to people. Part of it was because that was his nature. But the other part, he wanted to show us how to stand in faith. For those of you who believe in God to get healed, what better to do after you ask God to heal you once to look for sick people? Amen. 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 Look for sick people. Whether they want it or not, pray for them. If they said, don't touch me, that's all right. Walk away from them like I do and pray underneath your breath. Lord, they told me they didn't want me to lay hands on but I ask that you send your word to heal them. Amen. Now, whether they receive it or not isn't the issue. You're sowing seeds. Amen. Amen. The next part, it says, 
18 verse, the scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his teaching. 19 verse, when evening had come, so several hours had passed since he talked to the tree. And he went out of the city. Now in the morning, look at this, overnight, the next day, nowhere mentioned that he's screaming to holler that guy asking, why did he not curse the tree? Why did you not give me the tree? Don't you know I'm the son of God? Don't you realize I'm witnessing all these people? I didn't ask for fried chicken. I just asked for figs. He didn't do none of that. He gets up in the morning, and as they passed by the tree, he said nothing about it because he was calm. He knew God heard him the first time. Amen? Amen. And look what happened. They, the disciples who heard him in the previous scriptures, saw the fig tree dried up from the what? Roots. Not from the leaves. The roots. Isn't that interesting? Amen. It's interesting it did not say from the leaves of the trees. It said from the roots. And then Peter, I love Peter. Peter says everything's on your mind. Everybody else walked past the tree. They didn't want to upset Jesus because it's like the last test, this, somebody upset him, the tree died. We ain't saying nothing to him. But Peter was bold. He said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Then Jesus explains to him why he spoke to the tree. Jesus could have went to any tree he wanted and got whatever he wanted, but he does everything for a reason. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the reason why he even came on this world, he wasn't to show everybody, oh, look at me, big bad Jesus. I can do whatever I want. No, he came to show us how to have faith Amen. in God. Amen. He was the living word. Amen. He said, let me show you how to act when things don't go your way. This is one of the few times when he said something, it looked like it didn't happen. Another instance we don't have time to go for was when someone came and they wanted, his, they wanted this uh, man's eyes healed. Normally, Jesus lays hands on people, boom, they're healed just like that. But this time, when he laid hands on this guy, he said, what do you see? I can't see clearly. Everybody looks like trees. He said, oh, that's not right. He went in again. Oh, I can see. He did that on purpose. Amen. He wanted to show you that sometimes when you pray, things don't get answered immediately where you can see it. Amen. Amen. Because if everything always got answered immediately when he said it, he couldn't be my example. Because I'm about y'all. 99% of my prayers do not get answered like that at this moment. Amen. Notice I said that at this moment. I believe there's a place in God that as you keep walking with him long enough, it'll get higher and higher how many times things will happen instantaneously because your faith is growing. Amen. See, Jesus had faith that we have yet to get. He had the immeasurable faith. How many of you all have faith to walk into a graveyard and you just speak to any of the people you want and they just crop out of the grave? You don't have that kind of faith. Amen? But he said, have faith in God. 22nd verse says, have faith in God. I love what he didn't say. He didn't tell you how much faith. Look at that. He didn't say have big faith. He didn't say have great faith. He just said have faith in God. Because some people, they have faith about this much. And that's a lot to them. And God will honor it. Some people have faith about the size of two teaspoons of faith. He'll honor that. Amen. Some have grain trucks full of faith. He will honor that. Amen. He works with you where you are. That's Amen. why your prayers don't get answered as quick as you think it should because of our faith. Sometimes because if it involves other people, God's going to wait for the other people to get on the same page to deliver what he asked them to do to begin with. Amen. There's so many variables why things will happen. Amen. Other times he purposely doesn't want to answer because he wants to show off. God is theatrical. I'm not y'all. I'm nobody. No, no, no. Am I preaching myself? God is theatrical. Amen. Remember in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel were trying to go to the Red Sea? He purposely leads them to the Red Sea and purposely found an area where they could not cross unless they had a boat. That's classic God. To put you in a situation where you can't go nowhere else but ask him to help you out. Because he's theatrical. That's who he is. And, and, and they're like, oh my God, we should have we should have stayed in Egypt, eat our honey and sugar and locusts. He's like, what's wrong with y'all? All these miracles I did with y'all. He said, stand still and see the salvation of God. So they shut up and stood still. And the Bible said, God sneezed and called the highway in the middle of it. He's theatrical. He could have said, part. No, the Bible said he sneezed. All right now. He blew up. That's the one only time God purposely had a cold. 
So he blew a sneeze in the midst of the Red Sea. Theatrical God. He always waits the last minute to bless you. If you know that, you ask him to pay your bills. And they say, going to cut your lights off at midnight. So you're like, I'm going to ask God two weeks in advance. He said, that's all right. Stand in faith, Chris. Stand. Stand there for Stand. And I was trusted for the, for, the, for the first 13 days. When the 14th day came, now Jesus, you know I have faith in you. There's no other God besides you. There's no God anywhere. Because you got to talk about who he is. And when I talk about who he is, I get all excited. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the God. You're in the middle. Of, you're the wheel in the middle of the wind. And I got all hyped. And I, know, well, I know he moved. You know what he's doing? He's sitting on the throne like anytime yet. So literally, at 11.59, when it almost strikes midnight, all of a sudden, something gets deposited into my checking account. Classic God. I'm just using this as an example. Just making an example of it. That's classic God. Amen. Some of you in here as single moms, you probably wonder, how am I going to feed these kids? And you were trying to figure out, pacing the floor, I don't have any extra money. And you're like, oh my God, they're about to go hungry. And just you're about to lose your mind, someone gets a knock at the door. That's right. And some neighbor comes up, don't know who you are, you know yeah. who they are. And you check their food, God's so good, he made sure they bought it straight from the store. Right. So you knew they didn't cook it, because you, you don't know who they are. Amen. 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 God's good. Yes, he is. Other times you ask for extra money. Are you complaining why you get all these extra hours at your job? I hate this job. This is ridiculous. I'm always working my last nerve. Let's speak with personal experience. <laughs> but working my last nerve. And the Lord was so sweet, he waited till I just got all upset and a thought came in my mind. Hey, dummy. If you add it up, I gave you five extra hours. It equals the amount of money you asked me for a month ago. Like we <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> His mercy is endures forever. God will bless you. In the midnight hour. Amen. Yes, amen. Am, am I the only one that knows that God will do something like this? Amen. 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 And so <laughs> you move on, and it says, Have faith in God. And I love what he says. This is how you believe for the impossible. He said, 23rd verse, For surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, look at Jesus. He said, He didn't say, Whosoever said to the valley. All right. He said, you, You're aiming too low. Find the biggest mountain you can see. That's what God wants to remove. He's like, quit praying for me to pay your little bills and ask me to give you the money that goes beyond the bills. Quit asking me just for any kind of man and ask me for a godly man Amen. who's saved Amen. and sanctified and filled with the precious Holy Ghost and speaking the evidence of tongues and blood washed. All right. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Too many dirty people out there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise quit asking me for a woman who's tenderized. Ask me for a woman who's godly. Amen. Amen. Who's not looking in the mirror every time, making sure that she didn't get uglier. Amen? Amen. That's the kind of people I, go, I went to school with. Look in the mirror all the time. What's wrong with you? You know, ask for the impossible. Don't ask God to save your favorite loved one. Ask him to save that wretched one that's always talking about you and your kids. Amen. Aim high. Amen. The very one you think he can't save, God is Amen. famous. She and I are, she and I are with us. Girl, remember that wedding? He found the most, the most, uh, how should I say this politely? Some of the most outspoken people that, who normally don't like giving touched that person's heart. I remember he first told me that, and after I told Sharita that, I said, I caught myself, God can do anything. I almost said, that's impossible, mm -hmm. but he can do anything. God will bless the most unlikely yes, person will. to bless you. Yes, He's famous Amen. for using people who you Amen. think are your enemies, Amen. who secretly are admiring you. Amen. Amen. So he says, whosoever says to this mountain, not the valley, but this mountain. This and notice he says, don't focus on all the mountain ranges. Focus on this mountain. Don't ask him to get all the Rocky Mountains, Appalachian Mountains. Find one mountain at a time. Your faith needs one mountain at a time. Amen? See, one mountain, one mountain. at a time. Yes. How many know that if you try to conquer all the mountains, you'll give up and go to heaven? Amen? Amen? That's why... That's why God led the children of Israel through the desert, the Bible says, because he knew that he, if they would have went a straight way, they would have fainted along the way. He gave them that mountain, which is the wilderness. What is that mountain for you guys this morning? Ponder on that. And it says, once you find that mountain, he says, be removed and be cast into the sea. And look, it does not doubt in his heart. Notice he didn't say that does not doubt in his mind. You're going to doubt in your mind. How do you know you don't doubt in your heart? Simple. I use my personal 
uh, example for this. Shooting would, would be great risk. There'll be moments that we, we'll go through so many trials that the devil will be throwing at us. And it looks like we should give up. And I'll hear myself tell her, though I feel like giving up, I will still not doubt God. I may, be, I may be telling you how much this is hurting me and everything, but I still trust God. Amen. That's how you know it. you have a doubt Amen. in your heart. Amen. It's okay to scream. Just don't fall. Amen. Amen. And if you fall, you better get up quick. Get up. Amen. Because the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. Yes, that's what it says. But he's on getting up. Get on Jason, he's even better than Jason and Freddy Krueger. They're coming All back right up again. Well, Amen. Well, Amen. Well, Praise well, the Lord. All right. And then what happens next is it says, be removed, be cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says. Now, here's how you know you got faith. When you say what the Bible says. Amen. God will not move by your tears. He will not move by how much you pout. He's just asking, will you believe what my word says? Amen. So whatever your problem is, once you find what that mountain is, go through the scriptures and find scriptures that talks Amen. about that mountain. Let's Amen. use myself as an example. One of my famous examples, when I was looking for a wife. So where can I go to find a scripture? In the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs it says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing. He didn't say find a girlfriend, finds a wife. I studied that scripture, I don't know how many times. He didn't say girlfriend, it didn't say wifey. It said a wife, a real wife. Notice it says wife, because whoever you're looking for will conduct herself like a wife. Amen. Think about that. She, she, and I got real specific. So what does a wife look like? Proverbs 38, I believe. The Proverbs, which one was it? The last book of Proverbs? Yes, Proverbs 31, woman. See what I'm saying? Whatever the problem that you're looking for, the mountain you look for, look for scriptures that talk about it. And for those of you who don't know everything about the Bible, go to Google.com. That's right. I'm serious. Amen. Go to Google.com and type in scriptures that talks about a wife. 200 will show up and it'll bless you. If you're looking for scriptures that talk about what does the scripture say about budgeting, 200 scriptures will show up. Amen. I'm serious. How bad do you want that mountain to be removed? Amen. Amen. And then once you find the scripture, all you need is one. Uh -huh. I still don't want scripture. All you need. Jesus with the devil three. Amen. 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 Sometimes when you're scared half to death, you don't know what to say. If you have just one scripture, one the devil's scripture. terrified of it. Because you don't realize every time you speak the word, it's causing the mountain to be chipped away. Amen. That's why you say the word every day. Because the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Not words, word. Because you're going to eat one at a time. God is something else. Because when you start trusting him, he starts telling little things like, along the ways of Chris, you get fast. Okay, so anytime when you're going through a mountain, do everything you need to do. Look at little weights that the pastor talked about last week that you need to lay aside. Chris, when you stop watching this much TV, nothing wrong with what you're watching, you need more time with me. So I start cutting off evening news. I can, I can look through the evening news on the internet in the morning. Because all they can do is they're saying the same thing like every other hour. You know, another time it's like, ooh, like when we say in agreement for baby girl, it's like the Lord impressed us that the devil's going to try to attack her before she's even born. So we started fast. Amen. Anytime you're crowning a situation you've never encountered before, the first thing you should do is pray fast. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is. And then after that, you know, one of the fasts he did tell me this, your fast Chris, to be unique. You will have no cookies. You will have, you will have no chocolate. Sharita will tell you, I look like a craghead without sugar and cookies well. and cake. God will ask you to do things that you love the most, Amen. that you enjoy. In my case was sugar and cookies. God rid of that. I heard God clearly. Well. That's just me. <laughs> That's just me. Some of you may not be food. Amen. He may tell you, don't be on the internet. That was one thing that Sharita and I got, went together on. We were going to check Facebook for four solid days. I had no clue I checked Facebook that often. I told one of the fast of Facebook. Some of you might be, don't watch soap operas a certain time. Don't watch the Home Shopping Network too often. It's just specific stuff, whatever it might be. It might be, don't go for the movies that often. None of these are sins. It just might be a specific thing to your mountain. And what's cool is, he'll ask you what you want to give up. He won't always tell you. There's a few times he just told me, because, hey, Chris, you can't do that. I, I actually passed, I actually slept on my fast. One time I said, I'm a fast all day. 
So, so I, I set my alarm clock to wake up at 9 p.m. <laughs> he didn't honor it. Yeah, I went without food, but I slept. A true fast is you go about your daily activities. You don't ask for time off so you can sleep for 12 hours straight and then get up and say, uh, <laughs> that's cheating. <laughs> Amen. But long story short, I'm just giving you small little things to do. So, so basically, what I want you to come back from this message today is believe God for that impossible thing to be removed. First thing is find scriptures that talk about what you want removed. Amen. Second thing, speak it. Amen? Amen? Speak it. Especially in front of people who don't believe like you believe. Because that's faith. It's easy to say that in front of us. We believe you. But when you get outside those doors, they ain't going to believe you. What do you mean you're going to be the first one to go to college? What do you mean you're going to have a good job? What do you mean you're going to have a family in the future? What do you mean? That's the very one you talk to. Amen. Because then God's looking at my baby. He's called those things that be not as though they were. Look at him, Jesus. Look at him. What we're going to do, we're going to call goodness and mercy to follow him. Because if you start talking, Amen. he'll start walking. Amen. If I stand to your feet, amen. They want to get blessed today? Amen. And Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to pray for everyone who is tuning in, for everyone who's here, that you would bless them to believe God for the impossible. And the most impossible thing that seemed impossible is asking God to come into your heart and forgive everything you've done. And we want to give you the opportunity to say, Oh God, I'm a sinner. I believe you sent Jesus into the world. He died for my sins. He came back to life for me. Come live in me in Jesus' name. That was the most impossible thing to have ever been done is God forgiving your sins. If he can cause anyone like us to go to heaven, he can answer any prayer. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.